watchdog says only three police forces in England and Wales are fully equipped to deal with honour-based violence, forced marriage and female genital mutilation. An official report suggests only Northumbria, Derbyshire and West Midlands police are tackling those offences properly. So what needs to change? Let's talk about this with Jessvin de Sangira, who ran away after she was about to be forced into an arranged marriage at the age of 14. And also Diana Nami, who set up a support group for women after one of her friends was murdered in a so-called honour killing. Um, Jess Finder, I think it's worth just explaining to our audience what, what so-called honour crimes can involve. Yes, so, um, I mean, I, I personally, I was born in Britain and, and 35 years ago, the expectation on me and my seven sisters was that within the family dynamic, we had to behave in a certain way so not to dishonour the family. So the basic things a normal adolescent teenager would do, um, you were not allowed to do, like go out with your friends, own a mobile phone, wear makeup, look at a boy, let alone date a boy. These things were deemed dishonourable and shameful. And if you did them, you put yourself at risk of significant harm, being whipped off abroad to be forced into marriage, or the extreme cases, murder. So you understood that within a family dynamic and you live your life not being allowed to integrate into wider Western society and the expectation of the family is you behave in this way and then you will be married off and if you say no to that marriage, again, that is deemed dishonourable and shameful and you put yourself at risk. So this is, these are codes of behaviour that we are expected to conform by and if we don't, we put ourselves at great risk and there are, it's your family members and many people within the extended family members that think in the same way and are doing this to you. Diana, how do you react to this report that suggests that three out of 43 police forces in England and Wales are equipped effectively to, to deal with so-called honour-based crimes? Uh, we have been we have been campaigning for a long time for this report to happen, and we welcome it. Uh, this is uh, what we want: that police and uh, other organisation to deal with uh, on a base violence cases more seriously and with, with sensitivity. Uh, of course, uh, three only police forces in the UK is far uh, than uh, you know far from the real bigger world of 43 police forces, that means that it's shocking that in many cases women's life become like a postcode lottery. We don't want to happen. We want all police forces in the UK to be able to take all the cases seriously, to understand what is on a base violence, to identify the sign, to never turn down any women, because on a base violence is simply about life and death, and it's very serious. Uh, organized and collective cases that can be very quickly escalated and women's life can be taken by their own family members. Just Vinda, do you, I mean I don't know if you accept that the police have made great strides in this country when it comes to investigating the domestic abuse crimes for example, but this, this extra element, this aggravating element of so-called or perceived honour is, is the thing that that they potentially now need to concentrate on, certainly judging by this report anyway. You see, I, I was born in Britain. I expect to be afforded the same level of protection as my white counterparts. When it's a cultural issue, somehow it's watered down. It's not dealt with child and public protection. This report is incredibly important and, and it's echoing the report, the Independent Police Police Complaints Commission did in 2006 as a result of the murder of Benaz Mahmoud, who went to the police and appealed on five occasions and said, I've been seen kissing a boy to tube station, for that I'm going to be killed. And, you know, she was there, she was murdered. That report highlighted the need for awareness, the need for police forces to get this, make mainstream this as part of DV. So, sadly, this report is saying exactly the same thing as back then. Right. But... But so that, so that, that's not board. acceptable then, is it? No, it's not. And the thing here is, the, the biggest question today is going to be, will this impact on police engagement? Because it, it is not mandatory. We're relying on leadership, police and crimes commissions officers. They don't have to do this. It's about the will. And I hope this inspection and this report impacts on that. Um, can I ask you a little more about your own experience and... and your sister's experience, Justin? Sure. I mean, 
I'm one of seven sisters. My sister Rabina was taken out of a British classroom at the age of 15 years old to marry a man she'd only ever met in a photograph. She'd be, she was taken out of the country, left in India for nine months, forced to marry. And let's remember, when you're forced to marry, you are going to be raped on your wedding night. She was brought back to the UK and then expected to then go back to school with a nine-month absent, then be taken away to become this dutiful wife and daughter-in-law. My sister suffered a horrific marriage and the people you can turn to admit to be your family, they sent her back to the abuser because it was deemed shameful and dishonourable to leave your husband. So in the end, my sister, sadly in her early 20s, set herself on fire and she took her own life by suicide. And that was deemed more honourable. And this is the thing here, this concept exists. When our victims report to the police, very often they are not believed. There is inappropriate engagement with family members who are deemed as a protective factor. So awareness is key. My sister reported, Shafilia Ahmed reported to five organisations, the police were in that, and again, being sent back to the family thinking somehow you can sit down and work this out. You can't. The police need to understand this and frame this as child and public protection. Diana, what would you say to somebody who's watching now who might be going through something similar to what Jess Finder has just described. Should they go to the police? Bearing in mind today's report that says only three out of 43 forces are equipped to deal with this sort of abuse. Exactly. Uh, I'm hoping that this report be like a wake-up call for police forces all over the UK, and especially in England and Wales. And uh, uh, we, we, this, of course, we need to be mandatory and uh, all the, well, the training, the training yes. and also uh, having uh, a leadership and also having been uh, you know a team of police officers all around the UK in different places that they are fully aware of these things uh, the issue of on a base violence and respond to that uh, quickly and uh, urgently uh, women should not give up Always there is a help. If a police doesn't do that, organization like uh, ICRO, like Karma Nirwana, we are here to help them. We have been with cases that... What are the names of the organizations again? The Iranian, Iranian and Kurdish Women's Rights Organization. Right. We call it ICRO, because yeah. it's long name. Uh, we but have but that's, but, but, I, mean, I think it's... If, sorry to interrupt. When you came to the UK uh, from Iran, your translator was murdered as part of a so-called honor killing. Uh, that's true. She was uh, murdered, and uh, th the only thing I thought that I can do for her it was to report to police. Uh, that happened. That happened about 17 years ago. And when I called police, of course, they told me the incident didn't happen in the UK. It happened in Iraq. So it's Iraqi police duty to investigate the case. And I told them that she was a British citizen, and as a British citizen, she is killed. She is missing. You need to investigate the case, and that she is a victim of honor killing. They told me this is your culture, and if we interfere, you will call us racist. So I thought that establishing this organization and a campaign against honor killing and to raise awareness within police and other organization is very, very important, and the organization actually built up to tackle that problem in the UK, which we have come forward quite, uh, we had lots of successes. But the police response has been patchy. Okay. What we want police to be there for women. So there are help always. Thank you very much, Diana. Diana, thank, Nally, you. thank you for coming on the program. Thank you for Jessica Sengera, thank you very much for your time. Thank for joining you. us in Plymouth. Thank you.